Hi, my name is Dr. John Diard. I want to talk to you today about the potential risk of using your cell phone. The potential risk that we get from the radiation emitted from a cell phone tower and even the potential risk of the Wi-Fi signal. This is a very controversial topic, but it's important for us to talk about. The federal government actually puts out standards for cell phone manufacturers to basically disclose what's called the specific absorption rate distance, which means how far a cell phone is allowed to be up against your skin. Now, the new iPhone 6, the, the, the SAR score is about almost a quarter of an inch, which means that that cell phone, by manufacturer standards, are, is not allowed to be touching your skin. It's supposed to be about a quarter inch away. Well, how many of us strap it to our arms, put it against our ear, hold it in our pocket all day long? These are against federal guidelines. Now, we're going to talk about the research about whether it's, what the research is in terms of cancer causing and issues like that in just a minute. But it, nobody tells you that you're not supposed to put this thing against your ear. Um, and that is the federal and manufacturer guidelines. So think about that and how important that is. Now, cell phone towers emit radiation, and it's important that we understand that, that the FCC is actually using, and they've been accused by the Department of Interior for doing this, using 30-year-old outdated technology to determine whether a cell phone tower radiation emission is safe. And they base it based on the thermal uh, generation, the heat generated by the radiation, which we all know when you put a cell phone next to your head, it can heat up. They measure that. But there are new techniques and new standards that they can use to actually be more accurate and more precise about this, about what is safe and what is not safe with regard to radiation towers. And the Wall Street Journal put out a report that showed that 30,000 towers in America exceed the legal limits of what the radiation is emitting from a cell phone tower. And the Department of Interior got upset about this and said, you know what, they accused the FCC of using this antiquated you know, technology and basically citing that the endangered animals in these remote regions where these towers are and other animals and even workers are being exposed to unhealthy and illegal levels of radiation. So which is sort of really interesting when you begin to look at this. Now, the research is another very, very confusing topic. And in the article, I did an article and a blog about this subject. And in the article associated with this video, I talk a lot about the research on both sides of the aisle. I even cite all the frequently asked questions from the CDC about cell phones and the, 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 all the government agency, FDA, FCC, the CDC, they all are extremely conservative and won't take the leap to say that cell phone exposure actually causes any type of, of cancers. In one study called the Interphone study where they actually measured, measured over 5,000 people with different types of brain cancers from 13 different countries, they found that with regular use of cell phone, there was really no increase of any type of brain cancer. But if you use the cell phone 1,640 hours over the last 10 years, that was considered heavy use, which is a half an hour a day of the phone on the same side of the head, there was a 40% increased risk of brain tumors, uh, which is pretty significant. And there's a lot of folks who probably do use their phone up against their head more than a half an hour a day. So while the, while the American Cancer Association, these people poo-poo these kinds of studies, you know, we have to look at the possibility that there are there definitely are studies showing that there are risks. I have to say that, that, that I, I agree that the research is not confirmed. I have to agree that the research is not in any way conclusive. But there is enough studies, and plenty of them, and I cite many of them, that show that there is changes in thyroid function, sperm function, and, um, and cellular damage as a result of cell phone radiation. And whether it's high enough for it to cause problems, this is where the, it is somewhat inconclusive because there are studies that show there, are, there is no damage. But just because we're not quite there yet doesn't mean that we should just you know, you know, think that they're perfectly safe. Why not, on the safety side, use some precaution? You know, lots of kids put their cell phone under their pillow and then you go to sleep with their cell phone next to their head. This makes no sense and it, it's completely you know, unnecessary risk. Why not have a flick, like in our house, we flick a switch and all the Wi-Fi goes off in the house. So the whole house is shut down. Turn all the cell phones off so there is no radiation in the house. Take your cell phone, which has a location service to, uh, button, which, which makes your cell phone like a little radio satellite transmitter which, so, it can, so it can track you for traffic and things like that. 
turn that off unless you're actually using it because otherwise it's pulling in way more radiation than you actually need just to make a phone call. Um, using earbuds or using your speaker phone, um, not storing it in your pocket while you're, you know, all day long. Put it on your desk away from you, um, you know, when you're not using it. These are simple things and simple regulations. And even the CDC says that 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 the cell phone radiation itself is a potential human carcinogen. And, and, and that's stated right in their frequently asked questions. And that we should use precaution around cell phones. But because these government agencies haven't come out and said, hey, you know what, there is risk here, we should take precautions, no one is really hearing any of them, and we're not taking any precautions. So I really believe that we, we really should, you know, kind of you know, read between the lines here. There is potential risk if there's accumulation, or at least we surely do think there is, and there sure seems to be some studies that, that convinced me for sure when I read these studies that I'm not gonna keep the cell phone away from me as, as best I can and be very cautious about when I put that thing up against my head. There's no doubt about that when you read these studies, you, you know, you, you don't get concerned. And, I, and, and for some reason, our government isn't willing to take that step. So, so hopefully, you know, read the articles associated with this video, both the blog, I, I cite all the research that I can. I pretty, I, I, tried to, I tried to create as fair as a perspective as possible so we can really look and say, yeah, you know, cell phones are not dangerous, but there are precautions that we can take to, to make darn sure that we're in the safe zone when we use our cell phone. Please check out those articles. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Briard. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.